cool. Now, Yulo, when you look at something that's like designed to be in a dark room most of the time, like something that lives deep down in a cave, you're gonna look at that sucker and you're gonna be like, wow, that is all eyes. And the cutest pictures of babies are like, Babies! And a little smile right here. That's so cute because it's all eyes. The reason that babies have really big eyes, I'm just kidding. The reason the things that live really, really deep in the sea have big eyes is because they have much better vision as a result. And it's not just the ability to gather more light. Does the baby get cuter if I add a nose? Yeah, I guess so. And a curl of hair. What fun. Okay, the reason, babies, the reason that you can see better when you, uh, what are you doing? I'm, I'm throwing your paper away. <laughs> Thanks, that's really nice. The reason that you can see better is there's actually diffraction that occurs in your eyes simply because your eyes are looking at lights and if I have a circular opening in my eye, what do you call that, your pupil? Yeah, I guess if you have a circular opening in your eye, then that is a slit of sorts. It's circular, but you can't see light that hits right there, and you can see light that hits right there, but you get a diffraction pattern on your freaking retina. And I will be, if you're in my class, I will be making diffraction patterns on your retina. That's part of my plan. But I want to tell you that we used to have this equation where it was like d times sine of theta is lambda is a bright fringe. Now we're going to change this just a tiny bit to say that the sine of theta for a, for a bright fringe, ooh, no, I guess this is the first dark fringe. For the sine of theta, we need that to be equal to 1.22 times lambda over d. And I have no idea why this number is here. Usually, I don't like doing that sort of thing to you. Like, I like the number two and the number four. I'm pretty fond of pi as well. 1.22 probably needs a little bit more of an explanation, but frankly, I don't know why it's there. I'd love somebody to post a video in the comments that explains why this is 1.22. But D is the diameter of the opening. So I guess my first, that's my first dark fringe. Let me point that out right there. This is my first dark fringe. And if you have a dark fringe, that's a problem because you can't see light at all at that location. I guess this also means, like if you've ever looked at a car far in the distance, have you been ever looked at a car way in the distance and thought, that's a motorcycle at nighttime, have you? I have. Yeah, so you're looking at this light coming at you and it's like, light. And then after a little bit it gets like, light. And then pretty soon it's like, light. Like some kind of zygote splitting, right? And then suddenly it's like, oh, that's a car, right? Or yeah. that's two cells. But I'm thinking this is the evolution of your vision of a single, well, a double source of light as it's getting closer and closer to you on the highway at nighttime. This is diffraction limited. And I guess I wanna argue that if you are so far away from something that the first dark fringe of one dot overlaps the first dark fringe of the other dot, that means they're so close to each other in your field of view, you cannot discern them as separate lights. So that's the statement of Raleigh's criterion. And he's like, how does he spell his name? He's like R-A-Y, he's probably British, I don't even know. So many great British scientists. Props, Great Britain, thank you. Raleigh's criterion says if you've got yourself the minimum angular width that something can take up in your field of view for you to distinguish it from something else is 1.22, that same stupid number I'd like somebody to explain again, divide, well, times the wavelength divided by d. So this means that you can see things that are smaller if your eyes are bigger. It's just that simple. The bigger the eye is, the better you can see. And if you widen your pupils, because it's dark, you're going to widen your pupils to take in more light, you're also going to be able to see things that have a smaller angular size. They have a, um, they take up less, or more, sorry, less space on your retina if you have a bigger d. And uh, things with smaller eyes can necessarily see things that are only closer because of diffraction. Super profound. Also, let's look at this. If, um, if you're looking at something that has a bigger wavelength, then you need it to take up more space on your retina. So if you're looking at a blue thing, you can see it slightly better than you can see a red thing. Go figure. And I don't mean in terms of like rods and cones perceiving it, but I mean fundamentally diffraction-limited vision depends on wavelength as well. Goodbye.